So I thought, what can I do with my son's old laptop from school, which is rubbish, very low power, and very can't get more than two gig of RAM in it. It's an MB500, which is a, what's the processor, an Atom 455, I think it is, uh, dual core. Uh, it is 64 bit, because I got put 64 bit Windows on it, um, Windows 7, but um, it doesn't do a lot. So I needed to get hold of a spectrum analyzer so when I'm flying my drones I can just make sure there's no interference on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum um, and also 5.4 gigs as well, um, which it uses. One of the drones I've got uses 5 gigs as well. So um, these things are about three or 400 quig. In fact, you can only normally only get one that's um, the cheapest one to buy is a 2.4 gigahertz one. Doesn't support five gigahertz one. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd try and install it. So I've got, I've got three of these things. Hack RF, fantastic bit of kit. Software defined radio transceiver. It supports the monitoring and transmitting of one megahertz all the way up to six gigahertz. It's a fantastic bit of kit. You can even build a cellular uh, network with one, not very what far, but you can build one for messing about with and stuff like that. And I'm using it to uh, broadcast a small DAB signal as well in my loft under suppressed radiation conditions to ensure it doesn't uh, go very far. Basically, I think it's about 10 foot, so it's not uh, it's not very uh, very powerful at all. But this, I've got three of these things. They're a couple of hundred quid, two or three hundred quid, and I can only buy them from the states. Um, I got the other two because the one was faulty and the guy said I'll collect these when I'm in Gloucester. Um, he never has, so I've got three. Anyway, um, I've stuck one on the back of here, on the back of this laptop, as you can see. You may not be able to see, but it's plugged in and going. Um, and then I'm using a Spectrum Analyzer which runs on Java, 64-bit. Um, I think it's basically a port of a Ubuntu or a Unix product called Q Spectrum Analyzer. Um, and that's it. And basically you there got your frequencies that are um, jumping around. In fact, that's 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz there. Really useful feature. You've got a waterfall here, which shows, gives you a historic and also power as well, which is good. Um, if you go to here, just click on show peaks. I find that quite useful because what you get is you can get all the peaks and they hang around and I've got them set for 30. I don't know if that's 30 seconds. It is seconds. Yes, seconds. Um, maybe drop that down a little bit so they're not so um, persistent. You can also add something called a spur filter as well, which, um, sorry, not interested in that, a persistent display which will give you a nice bit of colour and show you what's going on there. I've got three access points in this house, all broadcasting on one of the sort of core frequencies so they're not overlapping and that's why there's so much clutter and mess there. The um, reason I want one of these is for my drones so even though the drone has a feature whereby um, it will auto return to home if you set the access point, uh, if you set the home point sorry, it will come home and uh, if it loses contact. If you get any sort of spurious RF which is powerful and messes up GPS somehow, then it could end up going home to somewhere else. And I know uh, when I did my training for my PFCO, uh, a girl lost two drones on the Isle of Anglesey because of um, heavy RF interference. And basically the GPS got uh, got corrupted and didn't know where it was and it just flew back to where it thought it was going. Um, what she should have done is put it into ATI mode, which would have, um, she could have probably recovered it, maybe. Um, but you can see there, there's a lot of sort of frequency hopping going on here with, um, in that spectrum. I just wanted, what I'll do now is turn on the Phantom 4 and then you might actually see some difference. So I'm gonna turn the transmitter on now And pretty, pretty quickly, you'll see when it's connected. Well, there you go. It's done a handshake and it's connected between 2.41-ish and 2.42-ish um, megahertz, uh, so gigahertz, sorry. Um, and that'll probably hop around as well. If I move around and 
just it'll tell me there's a bit of noise on here and stuff it'll jump around um, it's a brilliant bit of kit it is and it's not really cost me anything other than the hack rs which i already had to turn it off now so you can see it's gone um, if we put it on to another frequency so i've now set it to between 130 megahertz and 170 megahertz which is a vhf uh, frequency um, these are mid-band VHF so um, if I now press this there you go and that should be 1.64.050 megahertz uh, so really roughly look at that there you go and then bad is it and you can see some sprogging going on here as well a bit of harmonic tastic we just reset the hack RF again It now there you go so that's quite wide isn't it I would say that was there you just move it away because it's probably yeah you can see the harmonics on there as well 449 megahertz and that should be 449.475 so you know that's more or less there um, good bit of kit I think quite useful um, if you've got an interest in radio and stuff um, to be honest what I'm going to do now is go outside and uh, see what it's like actually out in the open. So you can see we're, uh, well you can't see but we are in the field, trust me. Um, and there's still quite a lot of spiky uh, frequencies being fired around on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency. But I'm, lots of things use that frequency, so or that band. Um, so I tell you what, I'm just going to turn on, that's clutter I think, I'm just going to turn on the, um, the drone and then you'll see as I do that, it, uh, there you go, 2.450 to 2.460 gigahertz it's using and it could change at any time to a different frequency. Um, the Hack RF supports such a wide band and it supports something called um, Hack RF Sweep as well, which is a very efficient way of sweeping a lot of frequencies at any one time. As I said earlier, it supports between one megahertz and six gigahertz. And it's basically stuck on the back of the laptop there. Um, and it's a transceiver, so I can broadcast and transmit as well as receive, but of course, that would be a little bit illegal, um, depending on what I was doing and how long I was doing it for and what power I was doing it at. Um, there you go, it's gone back to 2.4 gigahertz to 2.410 gigahertz now. So, um, quite a useful tool. So if we turn it off, he says, then, You'll see it, the transmitter, as soon as I do that, I'll turn it off. There you go, it's gone. And uh, there's not a lot, um, not a lot there that's gonna cause us a problem. So what I'm doing now is I've got it set from 1800 megahertz to 2170 megahertz. Um, I've turned off 4G on my phone. I'm gonna make a call now on the phone and hopefully you should see the frequency that this call it's using 150. There you go. So if we we can see it's 19 something. So if I change that, drop this down. Oh no, I broke it one. So there you go. That's my mobile phone call. I hang up.